So one of my absolute favorite features with Fish Shell is the ability to expand abbreviations and especially to expand dynamic abbreviations. So first off here, of course, you have abbreviations where I can type in DILS. I have that map then to expand into Docker image LS. I could do DCPSA here. That expands into something different. But what if I want to expand into something that changes based on a parameter? For example, the tree function here. If I want to list two levels deep here, I could put two here. And now when I expand this, watch this. You can see it does dash L and two. Or if I want to do tree and one here, well, that's one level. And actually, there's a neat feature in Fish version four here where I can undo with control Z and go back to where I was at here. And then I could do maybe tree level four here. And that expands into that. Or I have others as well. So for example, if I'm looking at my Git log, I could take the last 10 commits here and take a look at that. Or if I want to do a diff here of the last commits, I could do a diff of the last three commits here. Maybe that's not what I want. So I can actually undo across commands here in Fish 4 as well. So I can then undo, whoops, is there a redo? Yeah, there is. Okay. There's a redo as well. Maybe I want to take just the last two commits instead. So I could do that. Then that expands into a different range in that case. You can see the two here is inserted over here. And then it goes through commit number one over here. And so there you go. I get the diff in that case. So got a bunch of expanding abbreviations that are dynamic. In other words, I can type parameters into the compressed version and those get expanded out then. I have another one here where I do a loop. And if I want to loop over 10 items, you can see I spit out a loop here. In this case, then it builds a sequence from one to 10. And then I go through and print out the items here. So lots of different ways to expand out dynamic abbreviations. Today, I want to add a new one though. And so I thought I haven't really adopted using a command at the command line that will dump out a range of lines in a file. I use the tail command and the head command a lot, but to take a range where I start at line 10 maybe and go to line 20, like right here. So I can use the sed command to do that here, basically to P or print out those lines here from this file. I can grab those 10 lines. Maybe if I want to adjust my range here, I can do line 11 to line 20. So I like the idea of this. My only thought is it would be nice if I could have this compressed into some sort of compact version that I could type out that would expand into the longer version because I don't want to have to type that out every time to do gsed-n and then have to remember that it's 10 to and then 30 and don't forget the P for the print and then pick the file name, of course. So I don't have to remember all of that. I'd like to have some help from an abbreviation. So the first thing I need to do, I need to define an abbreviation here. So in this case, I could do cat r maybe for catting out a range of lines. And then I could come over and grab that command, paste that in here. So verbatim, I could build an abbreviation that expands into that hard-coded version. I won't want this, but it's a nice way to start thinking about what all is necessary to do this. So now if I come over here and start up a new shell, if I want to test that out here, cat r, you can see that expands out. So that is a static abbreviation, if you will. So now if I want to make this dynamic, a couple of things. First off, I'm going to grab the expanded version of it. And I want to start up a function here. I'll call this cat r and then abbr. And then down here, I could literally just do an echo and print out the exact same hard-coded command here. I won't make any changes to it yet. So that's all I'm changing right there. And then up here on the abbreviation, there's a function parameter that says, hey, when somebody expands this, use this function to do the expansion. So when I type in cat r, it's going to call my cat r abbreviation function, whatever gets printed out, gets them put into the command line. So that's how that works. That's all I have to do right here. Come over here, start up a new shell. If I do cat r now, you can see that is still working. So next up, then I want to change this here to be dynamic. So if I want it to be dynamic, the next thing I'll have to do is I'll have to define a regular expression as far as the parameters, if you will. So in my case, I'm thinking maybe I'll do cat r and then I'll expect that the user puts in the starting line number and I might want multiple of those. Could be one digit, could be 10 digits. So I'll use the plus sign to say that I need at least one right there up to however many. And then, well, whatever I'd like here, I could put in an underscore or a dash maybe, and I could change that later too. And then of course I want the ending line number. So I'll put that in and of course I'll make that variable. I'll take any number of digits there. So once I've defined the regular expression, I can then save that. Now, if I come over here, if I want to try to test that out here, obviously cat r doesn't work anymore. But if I do one underscore two, there you go. You can see it's expanding now. So still got the static version, but at least it's working. All right, so back over here. Now I need to parse out those parameters. And to get that, of course, it's going to be the very first argument to this function. That will be whatever the user typed here. So I'm just going to echo out whatever the user typed. Maybe I'll do this here. I'll do user colon here. All right, so now if I do cat r one, two, two, you can see it expands into user colon and cat r one to two. So 
that first argument into this function will be whatever the user typed. And actually, I just need the very first one of those. I don't believe it expands beyond the first argument. All right, so now I just need to parse out whatever's inside of that string. And for that in the fish shell, you have a string and a match function. So fish and other useful features that's got this string command with a subcommand called match, also has replace and split and a bunch of other neat things here. In fact, split could work here because I could split on the underscore. But for right now, let's go ahead and just do a match. And again, that'll be a match on a regex. So I'll just copy the exact same regex here. And then I want to wrap the digits here in a capture group. So I'll put both of those into a capture group. And so what am I going to match on? Of course, it's going to be that argv of one. I'm going to get rid of this part up here. And before I run this here, let me just copy this for you. Let's come over here and let's just try this out here. So instead of argv1, let's put in cat r1122. Let's just see what happens here. There you go. You can see it matches and it extracted not only where the match was at, but also the various capture groups. So capture group one, capture group two here. All right, so now if I close that and come back here, I need to run this command and capture the output into a variable. So with fish shell, that's the set command. And then I'll call this matches, for lack of a better name. I'll wrap this in parentheses so it evaluates that. And then whatever comes out will be stored in the matches array. And so I'll be able to access that then. Let's just try this here. We'll do test colon and I'll do matches of, and then we'll do, oh, it starts at one actually. So let's do start at two here. In the fish shell arrays are indexed starting at one, not zero. So I'll save that there. I think that's going to work here. Yay, look at that. I actually parsed out the 11. That's great. All right, so then if I come down here and just uncomment the static version of this. I'm inclined to wrap some of this in parentheses here. And then I'm going to add in dollar matches of one. Might want to actually create variables for this. It might make more sense then. Yeah, actually, I bought made a mistake there. So let's do start as a variable. I'll come back to that in a minute. I'm going to set start. So I'll do set start to matches of two, set end to matches of three. Okay. And so that's going to be the very first part. And then a comma, and then dollar and end and P. And actually, that's going to be an issue there. So what I think I'll do here is I will finish that string right there and just do the P right here. All right, so it's going to be, let's close that off there. And then, yeah, I'll leave the file name on there, even though that doesn't make sense right now. We'll come back to that in a minute. I think that's okay right there. All right, so let's test this out. Yeah, that's looking good. You can see it took 11 to 22. Let's just, let's just try that again to make sure it's actually doing it dynamically. There you go, 11 to 33. And right inside of the right file, though, I don't think I'm in the right directory anymore. But if I really want to test that out. Okay, yep, that's grabbing the appropriate file. Everything's working there. So now the last thing is, of course, I don't want to hard code the file. So maybe what I'll do is just stop at this point where I'm only spitting out the line range. In other words, cat r44. Yep. And yeah, I just wanted to show you, this is actually not that difficult. Anything I want to do, all I have to do is figure out how to parse whatever parameter I want off of the contracted version, and then just echo it out from this little helper function. Just echo out whatever I'd like here. And that entails some variables here. And then that's all I have to do to create a dynamic abbreviation. And again, that's inside of the fish shell. And if you want to see some more examples of this, if you go out to my dot files repo, I'll run the ag command here. Look for abbreviations with the function parameter. In fact, I could come back and add the dash dash function parameter if you really want to be specific. See, there are a ton of matches here. You can go through all these and figure out other things like, for example, disk usage. So I've got du1 for disk usage one directory right here. Or if I want to look two levels deep then, I've got that one right here. Another example of this. So if I'm sitting inside of a directory with a video file and I want to convert this, well, I have one that is underscore MP4 because a lot of times I'm recording in a Matroska file MKV and I want it to convert to MP4. Well, I can just type that in underscore MP4. And look at that. It found the actual video file, part one. It went and looked for the very first Matroska video file. It then stuck that in there as an input, and then it copies it here. And you can see it copies it to part one dot. And then in this case, it's MP4, so not MKV. So it does all the work for me. So I don't have to do the basics of parsing that file name and typing it into the output, et cetera.